What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us for this special prayer night. This is July 2022, and this month we are praying for our nation. But before we get into our actual prayer event, I thought it would be fun since it is the 4th of July week um, to kind of talk a little bit about how we spent our 4th of July celebrating our freedom. Brandon, thanks so much for being here tonight. Dude, great to be here. <laughs> so tell us, tell everybody how you spent the 4th of July. Man, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> My life is so lame. And you don't realize how lame your life is until you have to talk about it on a podcast. So uh, my family went out of town. Uh, mm-hmm. They're gone for the week. And so on that day, I worked all day. And oh. so we had the day off. The offices were closed. I came in nice. till about 10, uh, worked um, on message prep till 10 here, then went back to the house, worked on message prep there till almost four. Holy cow. And... Uh, after that, I uh, went for a run, and <laughs> nice. I thought I may go and uh, check out the fireworks. Right. But I decided not <laughs> to do that, because by the time I got done with dinner, it was like 7.15, oh, and yeah. I was waxed. Well, so there you go. I was like, I'm just going to stay in. Probably mentally, too, spending a whole day working on a message. When everybody else is playing. Everybody else is, Yeah. <sighs> Well, uh, how about you? Please I, tell me you did better than I did. I did better than you. Funny thing is, is that my family is also out of town. Uh, my wife and my girls, uh, uh, they're actually out. They're in Tennessee visiting with her family or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's me and my son, Micah. Yeah. Um, he is competing this week. His first game is actually tonight, Thursday, for the 10U All-Stars Regional championship that's what he's playing now, right now i want to clarify regional <laughs> this is not like hey region of our state oh no no these boys are already state champs yeah they won the state and championship. now they're competing yeah. regionally in the nation right. to make it to the world series that's right these I, guys are legit i'm excited It's it's been a lot of fun this year so um so micah and i are at the house um this week because he's got to be here for games and whatnot um and practices all that jazz so uh my wife and my girls are out of town he and i had planned on spending the day on the water um but obviously we were worried about the threat of rain or whatever yeah. so we decided we were just going to have a fun father Sunday. So we did get out and do a little bit of fishing in the morning. Uh, no luck, nothing was biting, uh, oh. but it was fun just to get out there. And yeah. then um, we went back to the house and I basically told him, Hey, we can do whatever you want to do today, but let's do it inside, not outside because of the yeah. rain and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he chose bowling. So uh, we went and bowled. Uh, what over was there. your best score? 130 something. Not, not great. Bad. Not, not, not bad. Uh, not great. Just you know, a couple of strikes and spares, but nothing. I'm, I'm not consistent. So yeah, yeah. anyway, so we bowled and then when we got done bowling and he was like, let's go jump at mullet hop. Oh, oh my wow. word. Talk about being waxed by the end of the night. Holy smokes, man. So he had me jumping for an hour and we were like doing flips and he's like, you know, I'm going to do this and then you got to do the same thing. And I'm like, dude, I'm in my forties now. Like I can't do this stuff anymore. So Simon I remember <laughs> says, Micah says, <laughs> exactly. So I jumped, I jumped, was standing on this platform. I jumped off and then I did like a front flip into this like foam pit thing oh, that yeah. they have. I couldn't get out of that thing. It was, <laughs> took all that I had to get up out of that thing. I don't know how they do it. But so we anyway. need to pray for you. Like you're probably oh, sore. Oh and- my goodness. I woke up, I was walking with a limp. I was like, Micah, are you sore? And he's like, no, like, uh, so anyway, so, uh, yeah, well, that's, that's how I spent my fourth, fourth of July. I'm sure that it was probably somewhat relaxing for you just to have the place to yeah. yourself. And I know yeah. you worked, but you know, at least you can kind of be alone with your thoughts it and it was a good day zone in. So that's good. Yeah. Well, that's the topic of, of this week is, is, you know, kind of, we're kind of taking a, uh, you know, a, a cue off of the holiday yeah. and we're saying, Hey, the month of July, we're going to dedicate our our prayer focus um, to this idea of our country, because this is a very tumultuous time here in our nation. Yeah. And, you know, with people in our community, I mean, we just had this big um, Supreme Court Roe v. Wade thing. And and there just seems to be a lot of turmoil in the idea of, yeah. you know, uh, our nation and our political climate and everything. So we thought it would be appropriate to uh, just really kind of dive into that, you know, think about, you know, what does the Bible have to say about this kind of thing and these issues, but then also lead our folks into a time of prayer and, and, and maybe kind of educate them or give them some prayer points that they could use in their own prayer life as they're thinking about 
this idea of our nation and the political divide divide and all that. So I just kind of got some questions here to kind of launch us into this topic. Okay. Um, and so uh, the first question here, like, why do you think there is such a divide in our nation and why has it intensified so much in recent years? I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a little short season when I even wondered whether or not it really had intensified. Mm. Um, and it was an important question for me because I think it's easy to believe this is as bad as it has ever been. Sure. Like the country is deteriorating before our eyes. So I asked some people who will say they're more mature. Yeah. Um, they're old. Yeah. Um, I said, hey, what was it like, seriously, in the late 60s, early 70s? when there was division over all kinds of things, there gotcha. were racial tensions, there was division over Vietnam, yeah. soldiers were coming home and people were spitting on them. Mm. Like, was it as bad then as it is today or is it really worse? And a lot of them kind of go back and go, you know, I don't know. I mean, it might not have been quite as bad, but it was pretty bad. Wow. And so I think it's important to, to you know, don't always believe, yeah. you know, the hype. Like, you know, the country's been through some really difficult times yeah. in the last couple of hundred years, mm -hmm. and it's bad, and we want to pray. Yeah. Um, we want to pray for God to move and for things to get better, but I also think, man, we've been through we've been through really difficult seasons before. I think the reason, though, that it feels like it's so intense mm -hmm. is because we have access to too much information. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that there are gonna, there's going to come a time in our future when we will look back on this season of our life as a society yeah. and we will realize we did not know how to handle and manage all of the information that we had access to. Wow. You know, people call this the information age and we think, oh, that's great, man. Mm. We can just get all kinds of information. You can. Yeah. And that may not always be a no. good thing. It take you down to bad. Because <laughs> every time there's a bad story, yeah. you have access to it mm. and you hear about it. And so every time there's a bad thing, it's turned into a really big thing. Yeah. Because we need people to tune into this channel. We need people to watch this news. We sure. need people to check out this YouTube clip. And yeah. so we're making every bad thing into a really big thing. Yeah. And because we have so much easy access to it, it just feels bad bad yeah. right now. And so, you know, I might even encourage people to limit the access that they take advantage of in terms of the information that they're accessing day in and Absolutely. day out, you know, and temper that thing a little bit. Yeah. All right. So here's a question that I hear a lot in the church. Um, you know, what do we do or what can we do as believers when we encounter somebody who has a different political mindset than we have? Yeah. Um, yeah, that you can run into that a lot. Um, unfortunately, I think there's, you know, probably a couple of things. I think maybe the most important thing is to remember what we talked about because it was last weekend. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot about the importance of winning people rather than winning the argument. Well, that's good. And so when we, when we look at what's happening and we're like, man, there's people who see things very differently than I do. Yeah. We, we need to be careful there. We need to be careful not to try to win the argument, but we need to understand that, man, the reason they believe what they believe is probably because of where their worldview starts. My worldview shapes how I see all of these divisive issues in America. And so where I start is I start with the Bible and I start with God. And then out of that, my understanding of all these issues is affected. Same thing for them. Yeah. And so the fact that they see it differently says they may have a different starting point than you. Yeah. And so we need to help them. We need to love them. We need to listen to them. We need to understand them. And ultimately remember, man, I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm trying to win people to Christ. That's far more important. Yeah. I, I, I wrote that down from Sunday when I was listening to the message. And I think you said, and when thinking about arguments or these, you know, conversations or whatever, don't be in it to win it, yeah, yeah, be yeah. in it to win them. Yeah. And I think that's huge for us to remember. So that's, that's a good word. You know, I haven't read it yet. Andy Stanley wrote a book by that title, right? not in it to win it. Right. And so I haven't read it yet, but you know, it may be worth digging into. I, sure. I know he's talking a lot about the issues that people are dealing with in America, yeah. in America, and they're, he's at least trying to help you think about it biblically, and so maybe some value in that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's think globally. So, what can we do as a church to ensure that maybe we're operating in accordance to God's plan mm -hmm. um, with this whole idea of the political climate and all that stuff? Yeah, I kind of go back to you know what we were just talking about in terms of you know how do you win people rather than winning arguments. 
And I think it's really, really important for us to understand that when we're having conversations with people, I think what we have a tendency to do as Christians is we want to talk about what we believe when what we probably need to be talking about is what they believe. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, we'll sit there and we'll make a post about what we believe, or we'll make a little statement, a little pithy statement on social media about what <laughs> we believe, or they'll start talking about what they believe and we want to talk about what we believe. But one of the things I wish I had said last weekend when I was talking about that second Corinthians, I think it's chapter 10 verses three through five, Paul was saying, we don't wage war as the world does. Mm. He said, what we do is we demolish arguments. Well, what arguments are we trying to demolish? The ones that aren't true. Are those the ones that we believe or the ones that they believe? Mm. They're the ones that they believe. Yeah. So why are we talking about what we believe when we're trying to right. destroy the lie that other people have chosen to Correct. believe? He said, we demolish arguments. We take on every claim that takes a stand against the knowledge of God. Well, that's not our belief. That's the claims that they, they might be making. Right. You know, when he talks about taking every thought captive and making it obedient to Christ, those aren't the, the thoughts that we're having as Christians. Those are the thoughts that other people are having who are not yet followers of the way of Jesus. And so what we need to understand is that I think our tendency, again, is to talk about what we believe. Well, let me tell you what I believe. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is we need to help them see the flaw yes. in what they believe yeah. or the lie the and lie. Mm -hmm. like how that doesn't play out well in real life and where that road ultimately leads if we really want to go down that road. Yeah. And when we start talking about what they believe, then what we can do is we can expose the lie. We can expose the fallacy of thinking. Mm -hmm. We can help people maybe be open to hearing what we believe Correct. because they see now the flaw in what they believe. That's great. So I think that's where we got to start as followers of yeah. Jesus. Man, that would make a huge change. I do think it would. I think, <laughs> you know, that, that's why you hear so many people saying, well, that's just your truth. Yeah. Because they don't see anything wrong with their truth. Right. And that's all in, you know, quotes. Yeah. But I, I think that's where we have to start is uh, talk to me about what you believe. Yeah. And, and let's unpack it and let's see where that road goes. Let's yeah. see where that, that thought leads. Because typically we we can see that lies always lead us in a in a really bad place. They lead us away from God. They lead us into confusion. They lead us into brokenness. And so we just need to have the courage to, to be open and listen and talk talk to me about what you believe. Yeah. Still, you listening to me about what I believe. Absolutely. Well, we've been doing a lot of talking. Yes. <laughs> but this is a prayer event, and so what I'd really like to do is is just have you, you know, as our our lead pastor, just pray for us, um, lead us in a prayer here tonight on this broadcast, and then also just kind of maybe, uh, you know, give us some ideas of how we can be in. Con continuing this prayer thought through the month yeah. of July in, in the area of division yeah. um, and and really just kind of lead us in this moment as we pray and yep. uh, just well, help us out. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And I would just say, don't just pray with me now. I would say, man, make it a regular habit of praying yeah. about about these issues and praying for our country. Yeah. You know, prayer has the power to change things. The prayers of a righteous man can accomplish much is what scripture teaches. So, Absolutely. you know, make this a, a regular part of your prayer life. So let's pray right now. Let's do it. Uh, God, we uh, just pause. And when we think about the world that we're living in, um, God, it is discouraging to see how much division and God, I suspect it's only going to get uglier as uh, elections approach in November. Mm -hmm. And so God, we just want to pray over our country. I pray God that followers of Jesus might be leading the way in shaping our culture. Yes, Lord. I pray, God, that our culture would not be infecting us, but I pray, God, that we would be affecting our culture. I pray, God, that we would be peacemakers. Um, God, I think about how Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Um, God, I pray that we would be people who are all about peace. I pray, God, that we would be people who can build those bridges and build those relationships and develop a culture of respect for one another, even when we don't agree with one another. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that we might lead the way in establishing greater degrees of peace in this nation. Uh, God, I pray that um, you would help us to love people that we don't agree with. Yes, uh, God, I, I think that's the, the root issue is um, people feel like we're against them. They feel like we hate them, uh, that we look down on them. I pray, God, that they might know and that they might feel as though your people love them and I pray, God, that we just might, again, lead the way in reconciliation in establishing a culture of peace in establishing a spirit of love and in helping this country experience greater degrees of unity. Yes. I know that when Jesus prayed for his disciples, he prayed that they would be unified. Mm -hmm. God, I pray that for our whole nation. I pray, God, that you might, you might 
uh, create a, a spirit of unity and that Satan who wants to create division would just be banned from this place. And I pray, God, that you would just help us as your people um, follow your teachings in your way and not get caught up in what feels like a culture war. But God, help us to remember it's a spiritual war and, and our enemy is not flesh and blood. And so God, help us to love one another and to be who you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. So we've been talking a lot about people in this idea of division, and you just had a great prayer there mm-hmm. when you, you prayed about unity. Yeah. Um, but I think the Bible has a lot to say to us about how we should pray for our nation. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of Christians, um, and maybe just people in general, just think, you know, our, our nation is going to hell in a handbag. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, like, what, you know, what in the world? Like, but talk to us a little bit about what the Bible has to say to us about praying specifically for our country. Yeah. Um, when people talk about, you know, maybe the country's going to hell in a handbag. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just threw great, that at great you. Great way to put it. Um, I, I, here's what I want to say, man. This is such a great opportunity for us to introduce people to the way of Jesus because yeah. um, when things are not going right and when things feel broken, and I think everybody, regardless of what you believe oh, yeah. about Jesus, everybody feels like this is broken. Yeah. Um, and so I think when you feel that way, you're open to answers and mm-hmm. you're looking for a way out of the brokenness. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to help people see right. what Jesus wanted for this world. And so when Jesus taught us how to pray, mm-hmm. remember Jesus taught that we should pray, God, we want your kingdom to come. We want your will to be done mm-hmm. on this earth just as it is That's in right. heaven. And so in some ways, I think, man, it's as simple as that. Like, let's don't overcomplicate this. Let's start by just thinking about how Jesus taught us to pray. Let's understand that there are a lot of things that are going on in this world that are not going on in his kingdom. And we just pray that whatever's happening up there starts happening down here. Yeah. I think this would be a great opportunity just to pray to that end. Uh, yep. Maybe you lead us in a prayer right now and Absolutely. you know, kind of show us how we could do that and integrate yep. that into our prayer routine. So Absolutely. pray it down, man. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, God, we just pause and um, it's a beautiful thought to think about what's going on in your kingdom rather mm-hmm. than what's going on on this earth. Yes. Um, and so, God, we do. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray. God, we pray that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done just on this earth just as it is in heaven. And so God, as we pause and we think about what that might look like, um, God, I I love to think about the fact that scripture tells us there will be no more tears, that Mm -hmm. there will be no more pain and that there will be no more suffering. God, we pray for that. Um, We pray God that there might be such a, a, a move of your spirit on our land that we would see a massive reduction in depression and tears and suffering and sadness. Pray, God, that people might turn to Jesus and by turning to Jesus might discover the abundant life that he came to give. God, as I think about uh, what heaven is like compared to what earth is like, I think about just a a spirit of love um, and a spirit of unity, Uh, no more war, uh, no more tension, no more fighting. God, I I think about the fact that um, so many of the frustrations and the burdens that I feel, um, they they come back to this feeling that, that man is just sinful. Um, God, we are selfish, we're greedy, we're perverted, we're gossips, we're liars, we're selfish. God, we're we're a lot of things that, that don't just make us miserable, but it makes everyone around us miserable. And yet the thing I love about your kingdom is that people aren't going to be that way anymore. And so, God, my prayer is that you would start to change people in the here and now and that it might be a reflection of the then and there, that that we might start to get a glimpse instead of people wishing that they could just be out of this world and in heaven, that, that we might just catch a glimpse because your spirit is at work transforming and changing people to be more like Jesus. God, if we were all like Jesus, it would be heaven on earth. And so, God, please, we invite you to start with us people in your house, people who claim your name. I pray, God, that you might make us more like Jesus. And I pray it all in his name. Amen. Amen. Man, I love that. Not the the here and now, it's the the then then and there. there. So 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 my kids were uh, asking me one time, they said, Dad, what what do you think heaven will be like for you? And, you know, everybody thinks about, like, you know, (laughs) Jesus is preparing a place, you know, for them. And I just told them, I said, you know, for me, I think I'm going to be 
out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> far, far away from people. Yeah. And I said, because people are very critical. They're very mm. nasty. They're very this and that and this and that. And they said to me, yeah, but people won't be like that in heaven. We'll, we'll all be like Jesus. And mm. I was like, yeah. And I said, if that's the case, then I can live in town with yeah. the rest of you jokers. But if not, you're going to have to come visit me because I'm going to be tucked away somewhere in the mountains, man. Uh, but it is, it's just draining on yeah, people. Yeah. But because life is so hard yeah. and there is so much tension and division. And yeah. so, you know, I think that's just how we need to pray. God, make us all more like Jesus and start with your church. Yeah. And let's let's transition our our uh, our thoughts just a little bit and think specifically about those in leadership in our country. Mm. You know, a lot of the divide that we're experiencing today is because, well, my candidate is not in office and your candidate is, or the person that you have the same ideological whatever is is running the show, and you know my people or whoever, whatever, you know what I mean? So like, let's talk a little bit about what the Bible has to say to us about how we should pray for those in leadership. Yeah. Um, so I've got a couple of passages here that I want to read to you. Um, one comes out of Psalm 72 verse 11. Mm -hmm. I should have looked it up um, to see who wrote that Psalm. My gut tells me it's a Psalm of David. David mm -hmm. wrote a lot of the Psalms um, and David, if it's David, that's really important because David yeah. was a king and David knows what kings struggle with. Yeah. And so I'm hoping it's David. Psalm 72, 11. I'll read it while you look it up. I'm looking me. it up. Uh, this is what it it's says. It's of Solomon. Uh, Sorry. He was a king too. He was. We're he good. Was. Either <laughs> way. All right. Thank goodness. So here's what, here's what Solomon wrote. As a king who understands what it's like to lead a nation, he said this, may all kings bow down to him mm. and all nations serve him. Yeah. And so here's a king who, by the way, was the wisest man who ever lived. And here he is, and he's praying, and he says, you know what we need to pray? We need to pray that the kings of this nation would bow down and worship to God Almighty. Yeah. Yep. And I do think, man, like as we pray for our leaders, like I think a lot of us kind of think about the things, oh, I wish they would change their political view on this or that. Yeah. But but where it all starts is it starts in their own relationship with God. And so that's Psalm 72, 11. And then how about this one? Especially in America, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it says this, for lack of guidance, a nation falls, but mm. victory is won through many advisors. And so we don't just need to think about the people who are leading. We need to think about sure. the people who are advising those who are leading. Yeah. Because there are a lot of lobbyists in Washington. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot Special of people yeah. who are in there and they're fighting for their way and they are mm. in their ear. Yeah. And that's got to be hard to lead when you have so many different oh, yeah. opinions in your ear and people who honestly they have an agenda, yeah, and they're not looking at the big picture. They don't see all the things that the president sees. Right. They don't see all the issues. They just see it through their lens, and they're fighting for their way. And so that's a very dangerous climate to live in yeah. and try to lead from when you got a lot of people in your ear, and those people may not be bowing down to God Almighty. That's right. You know, they may be bowing down to something else. And so yeah. I think it's important as we pray to not just pray that our leaders bow down to God and have a relationship with God and that God is the one influencing their life and their leadership. But we also need to recognize that there are advisors yeah. who are influencing their leadership. And we need to pray for those advisors mm, as good. well. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think this would be great for us to do that yep. um, as well. So give us a prayer for our Let's leaders and for their advisors yep. as well. Yep. And please join me in Absolutely. praying. Absolutely. God, we do uh, just pause and we pray for the president of the United States, the vice president, the executive branch. Um, God, we just pray for congressmen and congresswomen, uh, for those who are uh, representatives of the states and they're serving in Washington. God, we just pray for all of those leaders, God. We pray first and foremost that our leaders would bow down and worship to you. And yes, so, God, I know that that those people are all over the spectrum in terms of a relationship with you. Some mm -hmm. of them are followers of Jesus, and we are thankful for that. Some of those, God, are probably on the brink of becoming a follower of Jesus. I pray, God, that they would just surrender and that they would bow down, mm -hmm. that they would finally cross that line of faith and become a believer in Jesus, and that you would start to shape their leadership and affect their thinking. God, for those who aren't even considering you, God, I pray that you would humble them. Mm -hmm. 
I pray, God, that they would see just how finite their thinking is and how big their responsibility is. Pray, God, that it might instill in them some degree of humility. And even if they're not followers of Jesus, I pray, God, that there might be this recognition of you. Pray, God, that they might see a need to lean into you and to seek your wisdom and your help as they perform their leadership responsibilities for this country. And so, God, please just let your spirit go to work in the life of our leaders tonight. I pray, God, that they would just feel your spirit moving in them. And I pray, God, that there would just be this sense of humility before you, a willingness to bow down, a willingness to admit who we are and to acknowledge who you are. And then beyond that, God, I pray for the people who are advising Yes, Lord. our leaders. Um, God, I pray that people who are bad advisors, mm. who have evil intent, who have selfish motives, who have foolish ways of thinking, I pray that they would not have access to the highest leaders in our land. I pray, God, that they would just be banned and mm-hmm. barred from Washington. Okay. Pray, God, that you would just remove them and that they would lose their influence with people who are leading. God, for those um, who are godly advisors, they think the way you think, they follow you, they understand your will and your ways and your kingdom. I pray, God, that you would elevate their influence, and I pray, God, that you might use those advisors to help our leaders as they try to make critical decisions that affect this country and in many ways affect the entire world. And so, God, please, um, we just pray for the advisors who are speaking into the life of our leaders. Um, Pray, God, that you would just, um, again, put great people and godly people in those positions so that they could speak your will into the life and shape the way in which our leaders lead. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, before we sign off, anything else that Scripture shows us in regards to today's topic that you think we should hit? I, I want to hit one more. One more. I know it's getting a little long. That's all but, right. But I want to pray for the people yeah. of America. Because, you know, I think it's one thing to, hey, man, we're praying for these leaders and advisors. Sure. We're praying for God's kingdom yeah. and for the nation and, you know, Supreme Court justice, all that stuff. <laughs> but what about the people? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people. And so here, here's the passage I want to go to, First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. He said this. He said, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings Mm. and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. That's good. And so, you know, there's this thought here that, man, maybe we should be praying for our people, Mm. that, that the rulers would lead in such a way that instead of living loud and divisive lives that are miserable, we live peaceful and quiet lives. Yeah. That we're able to go as followers of Jesus and live in godliness and holiness. And that our leaders would create that kind of community for people to enjoy. It's great. Yeah. Because here's the deal. I think even if you're not a follower of Jesus, you would love to live a peaceful and quiet life. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you would love to live that and a life of godliness and holiness. Yeah. But but our leaders play a big part in determining True. whether or not we live that way. Yep. Speed of the leader, speed of the team. The, mm. the leader is creating the culture that we're all living yeah. with for better or for worse. So I want to pray for that and pray for the people. Do it, man. All right. Let's do it one more time. God, we do just pause and we pray for our leaders, God, as they rule and as they govern. I I pray, God, that they would be intolerant of anything that that prevents the people of America from being able to live a peaceful and a quiet life. Mm. God, God, I pray that they would lead in such a way that, that frees those who are followers of Jesus up to live lives of godliness and lives of holiness. I pray, God, that there would be this sense in this country in which godliness and holiness is honored and rewarded and yes. esteemed and there's this sense in which ungodliness and a lack of holiness is, is punished and discouraged god i, I know that what a, a leader celebrates affects the culture but i also know that what they tolerate affects the culture and so god we pray that our leaders would celebrate all the good things and that they would be intolerant of these ungodly things. And I pray God that it might just create a, a, 
a society and a country that makes this place a much more enjoyable place to live. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Brandon. Yeah, man. This has been awesome. Uh, we got to be praying for our country. <laughs> Absolutely. Not just tonight. Not tonight. Uh, and and that was what I, that's what I was going to say to close this thing out. You know, uh, well, first of all, thank you for joining us tonight as we've been praying together. Um, I would just encourage you, if this was helpful, save this video. Um, go back and watch it again. Yeah. Um, take some notes. Notes. Uh, I'm going to put Miguel on the spot. Hey, as soon as we finish up with this broadcast, uh, I say we put those scriptures that you mentioned in the show notes Be so good. that people can meditate on those and use those to kind of guide your prayer this month yeah. and beyond as you're thinking about the political climate, the division in our nation, thinking about praying for our leaders. I think these are all very helpful scriptures. Well, and here's what I'll say in, yeah, in, go for in, it. in my parting shot to the people. Yeah. When you're frustrated with your country, mm. pray for your country. Like, don't just sit there and complain and gripe about it and be ticked off and your blood pressure goes through the roof and, (laughs) you know, you throw your remote control at the TV or whatever it is you do. Humble yourself and pray. When you're frustrated about the country, pray for the country. Let that be a trigger that says, man, you know what? I I don't just have to sit here and be frustrated. I I can pray and ask God to move and come back to these passages and just pray in a manner that's consistent with what God's already told us. That's great. Well... It's, it's going to be an awesome night, one, because we've had this great time of prayer together, but then also we're kicking off a brand new series this weekend called The Jesus I Never Knew. It's going to be awesome. Starts tonight. So if you're watching this video at home, you still got time. Get here. Get over here. <laughs> uh, or you can join us on Sunday, obviously. It's going to be awesome. We're excited about this series. It's going to be good. That's all we got. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's prayer event. We will catch you guys this weekend for service. We'll see you later.